Hey guys, Brian with Vest Source checking in on another beautiful day here we've got. Seems like we've had an abundance of them down here in Texas. So I'm going to take the time to enjoy it while I can before it gets broiling hot outside. Got another video for you today where I'm going to be doing some work on the uh, truck I was talking about yesterday while I was exploring the junkyard, the salvage yard. So uh, today what I'm going to be doing is working on this uh, Chevy truck. Normally I don't get into my... Uh, what I consider my infrastructure vehicles just because they're not, you know, always the most exciting for the guys looking at sports cars, stuff like this. But I wanted to profile this truck a little bit today because, um, you know, the old adage really comes true is you find a good truck or a good woman, you never let them go. So the little backstory on this truck, uh, this is a 2000 year model uh, Chevy C3500 one ton crew cab eight foot bed. So this monstrosity of a truck is 21 feet long okay uh, and if you're familiar with these trucks the C series CK series trucks they made these trucks from 1987 until 2000 uh, the year model 2000 in this body style the 99s and 2000s you can only get them in the uh, three-quarter tons and the one ton trucks they call them the classics I'm not sure why they do the carryover but you know, people get confused when I tell them this is a 2000 model because the 99s were a whole new body style for the trucks. So this would be considered a classic uh, truck. This is a one ton truck. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the designations, you've got half ton, three quarter tons, and one ton trucks. Uh, then that basically refers to carrying capacity inside the bed. A one ton truck will carry uh, up to 2000 pounds of cargo rated in the bed. And you can kind of see they've got bigger springs and tires or E-rated tires to take a bigger load. Uh, this truck itself, I bought when it was right at three years old. I've had this truck 16 years, okay? I never thought I'd be one of these guys that holds on to a truck uh, for this length of time. Um, but the truth is when we bought this truck, uh, it was big, it's roomy. It's basically an extended Suburban with a bed on it. And it's got enough people, enough room for five people in this thing. Um, and the kids rode around in this when they were little. And, um, you know, we used it as we needed to do, you know. Um, I have another family car for the other things. But in 16 years, I've, I've basically mercilessly flogged this thing, uh, towing stuff everywhere hauling the kids around, hauling everything I can around, driving all over the country with it, well over 200,000 miles, and it still goes. Now, the thing about this one that makes it a little unique, because a lot of people get into the diesels, and diesels are great. I don't want to get into that argument. They're fine, but this has the last of the old school big blocks. This is a 454 7.4 liter engine that is fuel injected. Uh, this thing will basically haul the mail. <laughs> I've never ever had to uh, do any power adding to it or anything to haul whatever I wanted to back and forth. You can see it's actually a Vortex series of motor, but this is a Gen 5 big block, Gen 4, I'm sorry, uh, big block Chevrolet that they've been producing since 1965. Uh, the thing runs like a top. It actually gets right about 10 miles to the gallon uh, in the city if you're gonna go stoplight to stoplight but on the open road as it got older it actually got even better gas mileage around 14 so this is essentially the special part of this truck that's made it run now again not to get into arguments over which brand of truck is better you know diesel or, or gas diesel's great they got a lot of pulling capacity but the complexity and the parts re requirements cost of some of the diesel motors are kind of, um, to me, a little more than what I wanted to get into. Now, like I said again, I put well over 200,000 miles on this truck over 16 years, and frankly, I just feel like it's just now getting broken in because in 16 years of ownership, I've had a fuel pump go out, and I've had the hydro boost, which is the brake booster on these, leak, and that's it. Nothing else has ever broken on this truck. Now, I have replaced... The ancillary items, you know, the wheel bearings, the brake pads, AC compressor went bad. I swapped the radiator because the radiator developed a small leak. But nothing on this truck is broken and ever left me stranded. So again, not to argue Ford, Chevy, you know, Dodge, which one's better. 
I will say that this being the last iteration of this CK, and they basically denoted this from the factory. These were C GMT 400 series trucks. These are extremely, extremely good trucks and they're very durable. So today what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna get uh, too wordy here. I'm gonna try not to because I do run my mouth a lot. We're gonna go ahead and change the, the rotor and I'm gonna finish up my brake pad install on the driver's side and the wheel bearings. Now the reason why I'm having to do this is one other thing I didn't mention is even over the 16 years, I didn't drive this all the time, but what happened when we had the flood here in Southeast Texas Harvey about a year, a little over a year and a half ago, this poor thing was sitting on the street and I didn't have the battery and I couldn't move it. So if you look right here, that was the water line on this truck. Within an hour, it flooded that quickly. And I was pretty upset at the time. I figured I'd lost the truck. I came out here the next morning, put the battery back in it, and it's fired right up. So, and with no electrical problems. Now, the other thing I forgot to mention too, is that these one ton chassis, they're unusual in that if you look here and you notice the dash, there's no airbags in this. This is considered a commercial chassis, even though it has everything else on it. So, a funny aside, you don't even have to wear seat belts in this thing when you're driving it around because it's considered a commercial chassis vehicle. It's not a, a, uh, a passenger car, even though it's being used as one. So, uh, the only thing I suffered from that was the wheel bearings went bad and they're making a bunch of noise. So today what I'm gonna do is go ahead and show you guys what it takes to change the wheel bearings. Now this truck has old school style, not sealed wheel bearings like new stuff does. This has actually got a wheel bearing like this that has to be changed and, and thrown in here. So in a little bit, I'm going to show you what it takes. This is like old bicycle stuff. So before they went to the new style, this is what you used to change out. So give me a few minutes to get set up. I'm going to jack the car, the truck up, and show you guys what it takes. It's really just a minimum of tools to get this done. A hammer, a, a, a flat tip screwdriver, a wrench, 19 millimeter, and the socket for my brake caliper and then a pair of pliers so let me get it all set up i'll show you guys what i'm going to do here and we'll go from there i'll be right back all right guys i am back with our wheel off and i'm taking a look here at our basically what we consider or call our hub assembly here with the brake rotor hub brake caliper here upper control arm here and lower control arm here with a spring. Now the Chevy one tons use a different setup than Ford's. I think Dodge's also use an I-beam setup with the Chevy uses, GMC uses a coil spring setup with a lot more, well, about the same heavy duty, but you can see how big these components are. These are not uh, lightweight stuff. In fact, this thing here, you drop this on your toe, this brake rotor, you probably likely chop it off because it's heavy enough. It's probably about 60 or 70 pounds. So anyway, like I was saying, these use an old style, uh, kind of like a bicycle wheel bearing attachment. Let me see if I can get this off here real quick. The dust cap. This is our dust cap right here. And we're gonna take this one off. And you can see inside of there, that's where our wheel bearing is. You may be able to see that turn. Yeah, you can see that turn in there. So basically, the truck and this actual rotor is warped. I can feel it right now. So what it does is it rides on those bearings and the new cars all use a sealed bearing setup where you don't have to uh, change these or pack the grease individually. They're just kind of a, they last a certain amount of time and you just swap them out. With these, you gotta pack the grease in them and look at them and change them, make sure they're okay. But I like these okay just because they're a simple little setup once you get the hang of it. And it's not too bad to deal with. So let me uh, let me get this off of here, and we will commence to changing this out. First thing I'm going to do is get the brake caliper off. So I'm going to get the wheel out so I can get to the bolts that are on the back side here. So I'm going to show you guys. The bolts are actually one right here and one right there. So I'm going to get those two bolts out real quick, and I'll get right back with you. Hang on. All right, I am back with our brake caliper removed and we're just gonna let that hang back there to the side. As you can see our brake pads are in bad shape anyway, so they really need to be changed or kind of 
see that glaze or that way it looks shiny right there you don't want that plus they're pretty uneven so like I said this was underwater uh, I did try to change the wheel bearings in it just to see if I could cheap out when I first changed it but it didn't make much difference because inside the bearing pack itself the bearing sits in a, th a thing called the race this is the race okay so if you look at this it's basically just kind of a cone shape housing for the bearing and the bearing itself is just little steel basically wheels rollers inside of a cage with an outer housing and what that does it sits in that race okay and that's how it spins right so of course this will be filled with grease if I can get this in here correctly so what this does is as it spins see how everything's spinning and it goes together it moves pretty smoothly right now again this is just basically the same technology a base about not a baseball but a a bicycle uses so what I'm gonna do is let you hear the sound of when it's not working right what happened with this one here when I changed it out originally the race actually had spots in it um, it had um, corrosion built up so I tried to sand it down but it didn't work quite as well so this is what it sounds like when it's not uh, doing what it's supposed to so if you hear that noise you can hear very distinctly that noise. Imagine that magnified inside the truck as you're rolling down the road at 60 miles an hour. So definitely needs to be changed. This sounds pretty bad. That is not the sound you want to hear out of your bearings. And what I'm going to do when I take this all apart is I'm going to show you guys uh, what's different. So and, and in fact what I'll do right now is show you basically I'll clean a little grease off of here. This is just a captive nut here that has this in place, of course, covered with grease. Let's see if I can find my pliers. I put them somewhere. Uh, pliers are somewhere here. So let me get back in a second. Let me find my pliers. Uh, actually, get that down there. Let me find my pliers real quick. Oh, they're on the table in front of me. Hang on just a second, guys. So you get your pliers and you're gonna close that off there not close it off I'm sorry pull it down put your cotter pin down and then up here your cotter pin loop that in there and you pull that out that's all there is to it okay now as far as this goes this nut is not actually even held on here very tightly you see how it just spins by hand so we're gonna take that off Give you a better view of that. So this basically is what sandwiches the whole assembly together because what you've got is an inner and outer bearing on this that holds it in. I get to the end here. And we've got that off and then we've got one little plate, locator plate. You'll see that whole thing comes out. Well, it can also, here we go. Pull this out here. There we go. That comes out. And that goes right there. And there's your cover plate. And you can see there's a little notch cut in here, so you can't put this in the wrong direction. Uh, and then, if I can do it one handed because this is heavy, <clears throat> pull this off. Hang on, bear with me a good minute, guys. I gotta use both my hands for this one. And it comes off. So we've got that off. As you can see, I've actually got some pitting and corrosion on the spindle itself, but I think I can make this work still without having to change my spindle. We're sure gonna try. Uh, and then, of course, here's our wheel bearing that's not looking too good. This is the one I actually replaced already, but still looking kind of bad. So let me... Uh, let me get, clean this up a little bit, see if I can salvage this, and we're going to put our new one. And in fact, you can see my rotor is in bad shape anyway. Now, one thing I will tell you with these bigger, heavier-duty trucks is they tend to eat front suspension components. It's just the nature of the work they do. These are real workhorses, so when you're loading them down and towing and putting things on them, this is going to be the most significant wear you see. So uh, let me clean this up real quick. I'll be right back, and we'll go from there. 
we've got everything off of our uh, spindle assembly here. And as you can see, there's definitely some damage from where the water came onto it or was sitting for, you know, a little length of time. And then, of course, I didn't drive the truck after that. But uh, hopefully I can deal with this. This won't be too big of a deal. Eventually, I'll probably change the spindle out. But you can see actually here even better, this is what happens when you get water that stands in a bearing set up for very long. You see these little marks in here. And even though those may look not very big, I can actually catch these with my fingernail. So what was happening as the, the wheel bearing was spinning around inside of here, it was making those noises right there. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and swap that rotor wheel bearing assemblies out and put fresh ones in and we'll see how we're looking here in just a few minutes. So let me get the process started of putting this back together again. I'll be right back with you guys. Hang tight. All right, we are back with our new wheel bearings in place and rotor assemblies. You can see I've got everything packed and in there and the final test obviously is just we're gonna see how this sounds. So let's take a spin here. And you see how you don't hear anything. That's what you want to hear when the wheel bearings are in there properly. So even as we go faster, you can see you'll hear a very light metallic, not metallic, but just you can hear it spinning. But that's what you're looking for, okay? So we've got our new wheel bearings in. We've got our new rotor in. The only thing left to do is we put our dust cap back on. We tap that into place. And let's see if I can get to it here. This is basically just a hammer kind of job. And that's it. So uh, I'm going to finish buttoning this up and show you guys what our finished product looks like. Like I said, it's not too stressful, but this is how you change old, old school wheel bearings out. One of our future projects I'll probably go ahead and show you guys to do is get a few more upper and lower control arms to change out. Uh, as you can see here, this one here, see how the bushing is all gone on that one there. So that needs to be changed. And that's a very unusual knocking. I have the new control arm for that, so we're going to put that on another day and the lower control arms as well. But for now, just to get rid of the noise and the annoyance and the, the factor I didn't like while I was driving, we're going to go with this for the next couple weeks. So let me finish buttoning this back up and we'll be back together with you in just a second. Hang on tight. All right, welcome back. And we've got our finished product here. As you can see, I've got my brake caliper back on with my new brake pads and everything's put back together again. And of course, a little stiffer now, I have the pads in, but you can see it rolls nice, does what it's supposed to do. It's got a little bit of drag um, on there, which is what you want, just a little bit. But um, everything looks good. So I'm gonna button it up and then be done. And this is gonna close us out for the day because I'm sure you guys have seen plenty of videos of people installing wheels and tires, so I'm not gonna bore you to death with that. But uh, again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, have a good, good time doing this, showing you some of the little tricks and things that I do and uh, in my business here, Vet Source. So uh, make sure you comment if you got anything for me you want to see or how you like the videos, just let me know down in the comment section below. And I'll be making another video probably later this week. I'll probably do one more on this truck. Uh, I've got one more thing to do. I showed you guys in that video from yesterday at the junkyard. I'm going to be installing this seat track here. So they really, the seat track itself works here, but you can see it's loose. So we're going to be fixing that next time out. So again, thanks for watching guys and I will catch up with you later.